What do you do when you show up to the cargo ramp in the morning and your airplane looks like this? Does the company still expect you to fly? How do you get it off? And how much ice is too much ice? The caravan is certified for flight into known icing conditions, but here's the catch. You have to remove the ice before you take off and then keep it off during the flight by using the aircraft's ice protection system. So let's talk about the ground de-icing process. This is done after the airplane has been loaded, all cargo doors are shut, and the pilot is in the cockpit ready to initiate the engine start procedure. But before the engine is started, one ramp worker will position the de-ice truck perpendicular to the nose of the airplane. Then, the worker in the bucket will begin to spray or apply the heated type 1 fluid to the airplane, usually orange in color. This heated mix of glycol and water melts and removes the ice, snow, or frost from the surface of the aircraft. If precipitation is still falling, like freezing rain or snow, a second application of type 4 fluid may be added. After this is complete and the de-icing truck pulls away, the pilot initiates the startup procedure and completes the before taxi checklist. When the pilot flashes the landing light and the marshaler confirms the area is clear, the marshaler will marshal the aircraft out of the ramp and toward the taxiway. The pilot then follows ATC instruction or taxis to the runway in use. Now let's fast forward to the flight. What does in-flight icing look like? What does it feel like? How can you determine the rate of accumulation or the intensity of the icing conditions? And when and how do you use the aircraft's ice protection system? Well, one of the tricks caravan pilots use to determine the rate of accumulation is to look at the tie-down ring near the top of the strut. Why? Well, this is because the tie-down ring is unprotected. It makes it a perfect visual cue for how much ice is really accumulating on the airframe. The caravan does have a wing inspection light and a windshield ice detector light. But honestly, I have found that one of the most important ice detectors is your own eyes. When icing occurs, as it often does during winter flights around northern Utah and Idaho, the pilot activates the anti-icing and de-icing systems, if they haven't already. This includes components like the pedostatic heat, seated stall warning vane, and the TKS fluid system. TKS fluid gets its name from a British aerospace manufacturer dating back to World War II. It's a fluid-based protection system that exudes a thin film of TKS fluid from porous panels on the leading edge of the aircraft. Imagine antifreeze bleeding through tiny pores to keep your wings clean, kind of like a self-lubricating shield. It prevents buildup and gives the aircraft a slick, ice-resistant skin. If used before entering icing conditions, you're using it in an anti-ice capacity. If used after ice has formed, then it's being used in a de-icing role. Sometimes the term anti-ice and de-ice gets used interchangeably, but think of it this way. Anti-ice prevents and de-ice removes. So how do you activate the system when you encounter icing? Where are the switches and how do you use them? Located on the lower left-hand side of the instrument panel, just above the pilot's left knee, is the TKS anti-ice switch panel. There, you'll find three TKS fluid control toggle switches. First is the primary switch, which has three positions, off, normal, and high. When high isn't enough, or the pilot encounters heavy or severe icing, the spring-loaded max flow switch can be toggled to the up position. This immediately starts a second pump, running for 120 seconds to increase fluid output over the leading edge of the wings. After 120 seconds, the system automatically returns to either normal or high, depending on what was selected on the primary switch. If the windshield needs to be cleared of ice, the same max flow switch can be toggled down to the windshield position. This activates the windshield pump, which runs for four seconds after the switch is released. If for any reason the primary or max flow switches fail, there's a backup switch. This switch is on a separate circuit breaker and wire bundle. When positioned on, it runs metering pump number two continuously. Now, if you suspect ice on the pitot tube or stall warning vane, you can turn those switches on to supply electrical heat to those components. 
In most single pilot IFR operations, the pitot heat is already turned on before takeoff, and it remains on for the entire flight as a preventative measure. Now one last piece of information. I want you to imagine running a race while breathing in large volumes of water, snow, or ice. It's going down your throat and into your lungs. Well, the airplane experiences the same thing. When you're flying through rain, snow, or ice, the engine is breathing in all of that through the air inlet duct. To prevent foreign object ingestion, engineers developed a sort of trap door or inertial separator. The inertial separator has two positions, normal and bypass. While in bypass, the heavy contaminants keep moving straight while the clean air bends and enters the compressor. The name is not just a label, it's a short physics-based explanation of the system's function. The Cessna Caravan is a tough, reliable platform. It's built to fly through weather that would ground lesser aircraft. But no matter how rugged the machine, it's the pilot's preparation and judgment that makes the mission successful. With a thorough pre-flight, smart decision-making, and the robust systems on board, the Caravan proves why it's the go-to choice for on-time, all-weather cargo delivery.